Andrew Cassell from Valor Accounting Services. Andrew, how are you today? I am very well. How are you doing, Leo? Very well, Andrew. Very well. How how is uh how's the UK? How's the how's London treating you? Yeah, not bad. I'd love to say it's uh, sunny right now, but that would be a lie. <laughs> <laughs> Why is it whenever we mention London, the weather has to has to play a part in the conversation? I know, I know, I know. How about <laughs> over there? Is it sunny? Over there, it's beautiful, as as you can see in my background. <laughs> Fantastic. Andrew, well, thanks for thanks for jumping on. Um, looking forward to our chat today. So today we're going to be talking about financial stability with your coaching business. Right, I'm going to let you introduce what we're going to be talking about, uh, but definitely looking forward to this conversation because this is something that we work with coaches on a regular basis, how to make their business more finance, financially stable. So over to you, Andrew. Nice one. All right. Thanks, Leo. Yeah. So I guess a lot of these concepts we've touched um, over the previous podcast, but it kind of, we're now bringing it all together. Mm -hmm. So we're going to just start talking about the basics of it and then moving over to a bit more of the, taking a bit of, of an outside perspective, looking into the business. So the first one is kind of fu fundamentals of uh, having a, a a financially stable sports business, and that is having a good record keeping system. Mm -hmm. What do I mean by that? So I mean ensuring that you in capture all your business transactions, whether it be on the be the bank cash transactions. You want to have a place where you have all of that. And you can categorize them correctly as well. What do I mean by categorize them correctly? So when we look further on in terms of how the business is performing, we want to know that if you buy sports equipment and you incorrectly categorize that as advertising, marketing, for example, then when you actually look at your numbers you're going to see that there might be an overinflated advertising marketing spend and you're going to be basing your business on that saying oh let's let's lower advertising where actually nothing to do with that you've just incorrectly categorized that yeah. as advertising whereas it should have actually been in you know the sports equipment mm -hmm. um, category so that's one really important point is and in the accounting world, what we say is if you put rubbish in, you get rubbish out. And that goes with, you know, transactions, categorize them correctly. So you know that the information you're looking at is, is correct, it's accurate, and can actually give you a good insight into how your business is doing. Does that make sense? That makes perfect sense. So question is, does this come down to good having a good accountant or does it come down to being organized with your business as a coach yeah i think i think it's both really if you're organized uh as a you know owner of your business then you're going to have to have a good record keeping system regardless now it's not to say that you can do it especially at the start do it yourself and ensure that it's correct you may not have any bookkeeping experience. So, you know, there is a slight risk there, but definitely having someone that actually knows what the correct categorization is definitely helps later on when you start looking at your figures. So I, th I think it's a, a, a bit of both, really. Okay, perfect. Okay, next one is turnover and profit. So what is the difference? So you may have a sports business where it's turnover just means all the income coming in, wh whatever the business is generating the money. And you may have a high turnover business, but that doesn't really give you the, 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 the whole picture because what do your expenses look like? Mm -hmm. You know, do you have large expenses in terms of hiring staff 
travel expenses, you know, as we spoke before, advertising, what is it? That then gives you your profit figure when you take into account what expenses you have. So that's something that business owners have to understand is having a high turnover business doesn't mean that you're a financially stable business, right? You've got to look at the profit. And even then, the profit doesn't tell you the whole story. And that's where we come on to cash flow. Mm. To stop you there, I really like what you just said, because I had a conversation with a coach uh, last week and he has a lot of turnover in his business because he, he he the way he operates his business is pretty much he doesn't his model is not getting clients committed long term. It's more just eight weeks of training. And then if they want to continue, they continue. And if not, he just brings in new new clients. Um, and you made a really good point because, you know, something he struggles with is not just turnover of clients, but also turnover of coaches as well, right? He's losing coaches constantly. Um, and you made a really good point because turnover doesn't necessarily mean you are a sta stably financial business. Um, so something we do in our company, we teach coaches how to uh, make clients more committed. So essentially you're getting, which what we're going to talk about now cash flow every month so that that makes you a little bit more financially stable rather than clients coming in clients coming out yeah yeah that's a great point as well and and it does really um flow into what we're talking about now is is the cash flow you know it's essentially money coming in money coming out but there's a bit more to it so for an, for example you know if you've got if you have a large number of clients and there may be there may be as you you know there's different ways that it can be it can be done it could be a block book as you says uh, as you said it could be a monthly recurring um income it could be one-offs as well on the profit statement it actually says that that money has been received because you've invoiced the client now depending on your payment terms it might be upfront payment it might be at the end of the month it might be at the end of the at the end of the season but from a profit point of view you've received that money but have you received it no you haven't and this is where cash flow comes in because it does take into account money coming in money coming out another thing as well is if you purchase equipment it's not going to appear on the profit and loss statement so if you buy let's say a company van where you're going to put your you know your sports equipment in if you're traveling to different sports facilities then that purchase that you made of the company van is not actually going to appear on the profit and loss because it's actually an investment it's going to appear on the balance sheet now without going too technical <laughs> um it's but if someone looking at their profit they're gonna be like oh it's a, you know i've had a good month but yeah. they've purchased the van it's not going to appear as a profit uh, in the profit and loss mm -hmm. another thing as well is you know what sort of purchases does the business have if it's you know sports facility you know rental for example if you're, if you're hiring out a hall or a pitch for example when do you actually pay for that and that depends on the agree the agreed terms with with the owner of the facility so it could be at the start of the term at the end of the term or during from a profit point of view profit and loss point of view once they've invoiced you they could invoice you straight away but you don't have to pay that until one month, two months down the line. Mm -hmm. So what cash flow does, it really does show what the money coming in and money coming out is. And another thing as well is, you know, and we could obviously, there could be a separate podcast on this, you know, but actually I want to go into a revenue model because that that's something that you, you touched on as well is what sort of revenue model does your business look like? Do you have a mixture of, or, you know, a one-off? Uh, do you have block bookings? Is it, you know, and we're going to touch on that as well, is it seasonal? Are you going to have certain periods in the year where there's going to be an influx of clients and then quiet time, quiet periods? How does that look like um, in your business finances? Mm -hmm. And then we're going to look at, you know, emergency funds. So emergency fund is essentially having enough 
cash for like a rainy day. Yeah. You know, uh, that's obviously very, very important. I thought I'd just include that to be yeah. a bit more, um, a bit more comprehensive. But yeah, that's pretty much ca- cash flow in a nutshell. <laughs> mm-hmm. Essentially, like a, a kind of a saving, say business savings. Correct. That's that. That's the one. Yeah. Yeah. So, so yeah, and then you know we're looking into expenses. You know, that's another side of cash flow, really. And it's very, very important as well for your financial stability, because if you've got a high turnover business, but it's 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 leaking profits because you're having expenses where maybe when you started out in your business, you incurred those expenses and you kept them and you've not actually had a look Mm. and seen, oh, do I actually need need this type of expense? You know, do I need this monthly subscription? Right. Or can I, if I there's a a subscription that I do do need, for example, can I pay a yearly subscription and save? Now, that depends on whether you've got enough cash reserves to do that. Yeah. You know, uh, are there any alternatives? Is there something that an expense alternative where, for example, if you're renting out a a hall, can you rent a hall which is cheaper, maybe closer to you? And you could save on that as well. So it's really identifying these opportunities where you can lower your expenses because that ultimately means more cash for the business. Yeah, like that. Also, another example uh, with coaches that we we work with or, or I talk to as well is a lot of them go to their clients. Now, what they don't realize is that they lose money when they do go to them. Uh, through not just time but also you know uh, petrol gas uh, wear and tear of the vehicle Uh, so all of those things that you've got to take into account as well so that's why what we like to do is we like to have coaches have a base where clients are coming to them so they save time effort money rather than going different places to go and train train uh, players yeah, that's a really, really good point because essentially, is if you mentioned that time saved could mean extra, extra revenue where you could be coaching at your base. Yeah, you know, if you if you if you total up all that travel time in that day or in that week, how much of that could have been you know used actually doing productive work? Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah. And, and another thing as well is, you know, diversifying your income streams. We have mentioned this before, Mm -hmm. but I just thought I'd touch on it again is, you know, what other ways you can provide products or services? You know, can you do online coaching? You know, can you, is there a a way, can you sell merchandise? Is that something that might be helpful to, um, to, to your clients as well? Mm -hmm. And, you know, that, that's definitely something that can be, and that obviously this could be a, a separate podcast in itself, but that is definitely something that is an untapped, um, you know, opportunity for sports coaches. And also it allows, and we spoke to this before, but in the seasonality podcast is your business becomes m- more resilient as well, yeah. because as we spoke, if you, if you're relying on certain uh, income streams, you know, if you're going to a uh, sports hall, and for whatever reason, there's something that happens where it's not operational. You got to let not only you got to let down your your clients, but your business is taking a hit now. Right. You know what I mean? So there could be other ways where you could uh, deliver services, and it doesn't impact your business as much. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And lastly, just uh, just as a little bonus here is you know identifying trends, and we mentioned seasonality as well identifying because seasonality doesn't mean it's a bad thing but if you can plan for it that's great for example during uh, the on seasons men sure that any marketing has been maximized before that time yeah to ensure that you get maximum results from that you get a return on your investment from your marketing and and you know and also i'm understanding the business stage of your sports business because the startup stage is going to be looking very different to the growth stage so for example during the startup stage you're going to probably have minimal income coming in 
and you've got quite a lot of expenses. You've got startup costs, equipment costs, things like that. So it's really good to understand that there is a different bet difference between um, a, a business in their you know year one, year two stage compared to a three, four, five, mm. and and then prioritizing them and and then setting goals as well. You know, setting goals um, according to that particular uh, stage of the business. Fantastic, and also. I'd like to add one, one last thing is that it comes down as well to what you talked about it, having a savings. So that's also important planning so that you're actually saving for those, those times of the year or those months where business starts to drop, which there is in this type of industry, there is, there's going to be because there's times of the year where your clients are going to be on holiday uh, they're going to be away. It might be during Christmas. It might be during summer and business starts to drop or you start to work with less clients during that time of the year. Um, I know in working with coaches that spring and summer is when most businesses go up because that's when business starts to, it's just that time of the year where parents start to get their kids outside, training, practicing. And then we, when once winter hits, business starts to drop a little bit and coaches don't prepare for it. So they don't have those savings in place and, and they don't diversify their streams of income, as you mentioned here. Uh, so, yeah, just being organized and planning. Yeah, yeah, I think that's, that's a great, great point to, to end up is, is understanding those, those trends, preparing for that. Um, and and also benefiting, you know, taking advantage of those trends for the quieter seasons, mm -hmm. but also opportunities that could arise during those quiet quieter seasons as well. Yeah, perfect. All right, Andrew, uh, I'm going to put you on the spot right now. So, if you were to summarize uh, everything we we talked about today in in a short sentence, what would it be? I th so to summarize, I would say ensure that you prepare your business, you, you organize its finances to ensure that you can understand the numbers, make sense of the numbers, and then plan from those numbers any opportunities or trends for your business um, for the future. Fantastic. I think that was more than 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 a sentence, but <laughs> <laughs> but, but it was a good I'll work summary. on it. I'll work on it. <laughs> it was a good summary to be fair. All right, Andrew. Well, thanks again for for jumping on um and sharing your your knowledge and expertise with with the coaches and audience that that watch the podcast. Yeah, brilliant. Thanks for having me, Leo. Yeah, I'll see you on the next one. Cheers.